Hey there, welcome back. It's Miss Jarnigan again and my Fortress of Science here in Seattle, Washington. And we're gonna be finishing out Natural Selection Part 8, which is gonna be Lessons 3.2 and 3.3. So, what you'll need for this lesson, a pencil or pen, some lined or blank sheets of paper, an optional but encouraged, a family member or friend you can check in with, a copy of the right chair discussing mutations, a copy of preparing your final report to Dr. Young, and your key concepts. So we're diving into part two of lesson 3.2, mutations in a population, and we're gonna be starting up with activity three. So we're gonna be investigating mutant fur traits in the sim, and this population here is a starting population of Australopes who are going to be able to mutate and their environment will change to cold. So let's think for a moment. Which fur trait shown on this diagram would be non-adaptive to a cold environment and which fur traits would be adaptive? So let's start looking at adaptive and non-adaptive traits when the environment changes to cold. If I mark something as NA, that means that the trait was probably non-adaptive. And if I mark something as A, it means adaptive. So if the environment's turned into cold and we're thinking about the amount of fur that these Australopes have, if it's cold, traits that are going to be non-adaptive are ones where you have a low amount of fur. Like trait number one. Trait number one's the least amount of fur we see, and that would be non-adaptive to a cold environment. Trait number two, mm, kind of similar actually, because there's also a low fur amount. And I'd say the same for trait three. And we get to trait four kind of starting to enter adaptive land, but not too adaptive. So the first four, I would say non-adaptive. Starting around five, maybe a little adaptive and six would be a bit more, and so on. So my prediction is, if the environment changed to cold, these traits going from about five to 10 would probably be adaptive, and traits one through four would probably be non-adaptive. So mutations can cause new traits in a population, and we're gonna use the sim to model how mutations can affect the traits seen in a population. But, Write and discuss time. Are all traits that are introduced by mutations adaptive? Can non-adaptive traits be introduced into a population through mutation? And why do you think that? Go ahead and pause for a quick sec. If you have Amplify at home, please go to lesson 3.2, tab three, page two, and try these missions out on your own. We're here in the sim. I'm gonna change the environment to cold and I'm gonna to go to the Australopes and I'm gonna turn on mutations. And we're really just looking at fur like you saw in the diagram for four. So I'm gonna let this run for 50 generations and just observe what happens. So one thing I'm already noticing is it seems like the level two traits are shivering and dying, but we are seeing mutant traits pop up. If you ever see the little Australopes that have a red dot, again, that notes are mutation occurring. And we actually have a trait for fur three that already occurred by seven generations. So let's see, yep, the Australopes are shivering, but yeah, we're starting to see some trait three, twos. I think I saw a one a moment ago, there's a five. Okay, so we can tell at least that traits are changing in this population. So I'm gonna now look at the diagrams of what this could have appeared as at 50 generations, and we're actually going to back up and look at generation five as well. This histogram shows what the population could have looked like after 50 generations and the environment had become cold and they can mutate. So pause a moment and write discuss which traits were adaptive 50 generations later in a cold environment. So we know that adaptive means that it helps you survive in your environment. So well, after 50 generations, any traits that we see still present is probably an adaptive trait. And the traits that I still see as present are, I was actually quite surprised by this, three and four 
did a lot better than I had assumed, as well as five, six, seven, and it's a little hard to see, but we also got traits eight and nine. Trait 10 did not appear. So based on that, we could say traits three through nine were adaptive to this cold environment. So now that we have a sense of what was adaptive far in the future, let's back up and think about what happened a little earlier in the timeline. So this histogram shows five generations. And it's, you can see that the traits had already changed pretty quickly within those five generations. So let's kind of think though, this histogram looks really different. Which traits are you seeing were probably non-adaptive to a cold environment? Go ahead, write pause. So when we're thinking about what could have been non-adaptive at generation five, let's use what we knew from generation 50. From generation 50, we saw traits three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine all appear in the population. What we didn't see exist was traits one and two. That would mean that traits one and two here definitely ended up being non-adaptive in the final population. So we can tell that because traits one and two didn't appear in the end, they definitely were non-adaptive, but it's interesting that they were there in the first place. And we know when we see a new trait happening, like traits one and three here, it must have been a mutation. With all of that in mind, are all traits that are introduced by a mutation adaptive? Okay. Can non-adaptive traits be introduced to a population through mutations? 